Hi, in this video, we will talk about how to connect to SQL Server and use the data from it. We would be using these three packages, ODBC, DBI, and the ggplot. That's just to plot the data. Now, once we have these packages loaded, I just want to check what's my SQL environment looking like at the moment so I can use this command odbc list drivers and I can see that I have the SQL server, SQL server native client, Postgres, Postgres SAS and odbc driver 11 for SQL server installed. So we would be using mainly the SQL server driver in this case. So There are two ways you use a SQL Server. One is a, a, a trusted connection, which means that your SQL Server is sitting on either on your own desktop and using your Windows login and password as, as the connection, or it could be sitting on a, on a corporate server, but still as a trusted connection. Um, in, in the other case, you would actually have uh, SQL login and password. We will talk about both in this case. So I would be using uh, SQL Server Express Edition, which is sitting on my local host. That means it's sitting on my local PC. And I'm using the ODBC DB Connect, which is supplied from this package. And our driver is SQL Server. And our server is hosted at this location, localhost backslash backslash SQL server, SQL, SQL, SQL Express. So using this command, we would connect to our SQL server. So in my case, the driver I'm using is SQL server. So the server is sitting on my local host backslash backslash SQL Express. And the database which I'm going to use is Northwind database. And trusted connection equals true. That means I don't have to supply a login and password. It's going to use my Windows um, login and password since I'm already logged into my Windows. So I don't have to supply any login and password again too. So this is called the trusted connection. And before we go any further, let me also put the syntax for um, the 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 login and password scenario also. So in in case you are connecting to your corporate data base or data server, you would actually be still using the same kind of uh, syntax. So server would be your server name. So this will be given to you. So you have your server name there. Still the database which you want to connect to. Uh, you would put it up there and then you would supply your login as UID equals the login which you have and PW equals the password which you have. So you would be using this for a non-trusted yeah, SQL server connection. Since it's sitting on my local machine, I'm using this one. So let me run this. So and since I'm using a trusted connection, I'll actually be using this connection and let me, before I go any further, let me make this as comment. My connection has been created. Now I would like to read the data from it. So this is how you read data from your SQL server. I know that I have um, a table called customers in Northwind. I can simply say, and notice that I've put DBI in the front. This is just to tell you that I'm using this library or this package to, to use the dbd table commands, etc. So it's coming from the DBI package. So if I run it, we have our data. So this has come from the Northwind database. So we are able to read it now. And 
there's another way where you can read the data using a SQL Server command as well. For example, I can run this. I can say uh, df equals the db get query. Remember, when we are reading the tables, you just supply the table name there, and then you use the db read table command. When you're running a SQL query, you use db get query, and then you supply a valid SQL syntax in there. So I'm saying select country and count star as n from. So it's just a simple statement which will sum up the total for each customer by, by, by country. So if I run this command, so my DF would have actually changed now. So my data frame is just giving me the count of um, the clients. So there are three clients which come from Argentina and two from Austria, etc. So this is how you read the data. And before we go any further, let us plot this data as well. So you simply use it uh, um, a ggplot and then you can plot it. Okay, having done that, how do we write the data? So writing is also very easy. You don't really have to create any tables, etc. In your backend, all you have to do is just give this simple command and tell the SQL server that I'm going to write the table. This is my connection which we created up here. So I'm using that connection. And this is a name which I want to give to the table. So in this case, I'm just using DF. And this is my data frame which I created up here. So the data which is sitting up there, so 21 rows and two columns of data would be written when I click that. So, so in this case, it says table DF exists in database because I've been uh, playing with this data before. So I can use another command to remove the table. So with this command, I have removed the table which was there already. So now the data has been written. And the data has gone back to the um, SQL server and I can check it by using a read command. I can say DBI, so in this case I can say DF, my new DF. So in this case I'm reading the data using this connection and the table which I just created up with the DB write statement. So yes, I can read the same values up from, so this has come from my um, SQL server. So the data has traveled back to the SQL server and we have actually read the data back from uh, the, the SQL server. So if we were to add the data or append the data to an existing table in SQL server, that's also possible. So when we created our table up there, I would want to put some more data into the same table by calling the db append command. So I'm saying that using my connection, um, I want to use the table which already exists is called df and this is where we actually created the table. And then df is my data frame. So I want to put this data frame into the same table. So if I run it up again, you can see that 21 records have been updated. If I run it again, another 21 records have been updated. And how do I check that uh, the data exists? So I can call this command df. So I'm looking at a table called uh, df. So I can give it a new name and say, I want to read the data from the table which we have been working on. And if I run it, you would see that there are 63 records because we have actually done it thrice. So you can see the data gets appended into the, into the table. So the other option which we use in SQL Server or in any relational database is to use the stored procedures. And in this instance, we can simply execute a stored procedure by db execute. 
So I'm using the same connection which we created up here. And I'm saying execute 10 most expensive products. So this is an SQL procedure. And I'm putting these square brackets there because there's blanks in the name. That's why I have to give uh, these square brackets in there. And if I run it, let's see what happens. It has executed the procedure, but it has returned a zero. So this is the return value coming from the SQL procedure. Now, what if you wanted to see what the data was coming back from the procedure? So we will have to change our query slightly differently. And we would actually be telling it to say DB get query and execute the same procedure like we executed it up here. And in this case, we are seeing DB get query. So this is going to return us the data. So we have the data which has come back from, from this um, stored procedure. And if I wanted to store it into a, um, a data frame, I could have actually said my df and the data would have gone to my df data frame. So you can use this data. In many cases, your, your procedure would need some kind of uh, input as well. For example, you would need to give a start and end date when you are running this procedure. So in this case, I'm saying in the Northwind database, there's a procedure called employee sales by country, and you have to give a beginning date and you have to give an ending date. Notice that I've put the dates with a single quote and for the whole SQL, I've given a, a double quote at the end. So let me run this and see what happens now. Again, it has got the results back and using the start date and the end date as, as the parameters. So Thanks for watching this video and I'll see you in the next one.